Hi there, welcome. Come right on in. This is Homekeepers, and it's the most wonderful time of the year. We're glad you're there. We're glad to be here, and I hope you're enjoying the season and all the beautiful things and all the great food that is prepared this month, and then we cut the calories next month, but uh, this is the time to absolutely enjoy and remember that Jesus came to earth. I, I, I'd like to tell people, remember, we're celebrating something that started in a barn, and we need to keep our thoughts there, but everything else reminds me of Jesus. You know, the lights, don't you love the lights? He's the light of the world. He's the bread of life. You know, we're fixing all these wonderful, wonderful recipes. He has furnished the theme for more songs than anybody ever born, and the music is great. It's all wonderful. It all reminds me of him. I hope that it will remind you of him as well, and that's Jesus Christ. Got a great program for you today. I want everybody in this room to applaud because Evie's here today. It's such a delight to have her. Uh, she's been on the show before and it's been a long, long time, but uh, so many of you will remember there was never anybody like Evie uh, when it came to recording and concerts and so forth and a beautiful, beautiful Christian life that she has lived in front of the whole world. Uh, very much a part of the Billy Graham Association, and it's just a special treat to have her here, and uh, we'll catch up. She had a wonderful, wonderful life so far, and I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make something that gives you that aroma. Sometimes during the holidays, I just put some cider on the stove with some cinnamon sticks in it, and it says Christmas. Well, this is called a slow cooker caramel apple cider. Now you know that's going to be good. We'll show you how to make it. As soon as I tell you about this little booklet, Cradle, Cross, and Crown, perfect, perfect for this time of year by Billy Graham, and it is very concise. It teaches you how Jesus was born in a manger and how the cross was out there waiting for him and how he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords today, that crown. So I want you to have this. I want you to read it to your children. Um, it's just good, basic, basic theology that everybody needs to know and everybody needs to remember. Everybody needs to uh, just remind themselves uh, this is the gospel. This is yours for any gift at all uh, to the ministry. The address is on your screen. That's box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. And uh, we will get it out to you. Any gift at all helps us stay on the air. We appreciate it. And I'm over here with Stephanie now. And doesn't it smell good? Oh, it smells like Christmas in It here. does smell Fabulous. like Christmas. I love it. And this is uh, something that you put in your slow cooker. This is fancy dancy apple cider. Yeah, th it's this the most is fancy. not redneck apple cider by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, now... We've got it in a crock pot, but you can right. you're going to mix know, it. If you in don't here. want to do it in a crock pot, you can easily put it on your yeah. oven, and then your house is really going to smell. Well, good. let's show them how to put it together, and yes. then we'll taste some. Yep, okay. I'm going to have you. Um, it calls for cheesecloth. Uh -huh. We got gauze. Look, <laughs> just gauze from the store. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to put two cinnamon sticks in here. Oh, that's hard. And two and a tablespoon of the whole oh, allspice. allspice. And then I'm going to um, just slice a vanilla bean here. I have never, ever used a vanilla bean before, so you, boy, we're always learning I'm telling something. You, fancy, fancy. You don't want to slice all the way through. You just want to slice the top. Have you done that? Left. Have you used it before? No. Okay. I haven't, but I. How much of this? A tablespoon. This I is your whole allspice. Enough to know how to do it, so that was good. Oh, okay, well, that's good. Because you know, I usually just use the. I would the say vanilla. the Food Network is a blessing. Yes, for sure. You can call me anytime, Food Network. Now. Apparently, this is much more potent mm -hmm. and all than if you just put vanilla in it. Right, right. So I have this open. So what you're going to, if you want to go ahead and just put um, eight cups of apple cider in the pan. I think there's eight cups in here, isn't there? Do I need? Close enough, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and just pour it in. Yeah. So I've sliced the vanilla bean down the center. And now I'm just going to um, scrape out the vanilla with a knife. And I'm going to put it in the pan. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to scrape out the other it side. It must be pretty powerful, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Okay, and then we're going to put this 
the vanilla bean in the gauze. Mm -hmm. And if you just want to tie the four corners. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put a cup of caramel syrup mm -hmm. in the pan right over you. Ooh. Oh, yeah. We know it's good. Yeah. Here, let's switch sides so I can do this. Mm -hmm. How about this? And then we have lemon juice, lemon which juice. I was surprised by, but I think it brings out the flavors. Mm -hmm. I am tying these opposite corners. Yes, and just tie them good mm -hmm. because it's just going to come in here and it's just going to, um, all that flavor is going to infuse in here. Mm -hmm. Break up that vanilla. It looks a little weird and, and I will tell you when this, this looks like a dead fish when you, yeah. <laughs> how's that? It's like yeah, tie it in a knot. Okay. Oh, here. <laughs> Need one more knot, huh? Yeah, let's All just right. make sure it doesn't open up. There okay. we go. And then you just put it in there, and then you would just do a slow simmer it's on the oven. three hours, three or four hours, or just warm, in the slow. Pot. Yeah. Okay, so let's now. let's get you some. Yeah. And we have whipping cream that you love. You wanted the big glass. Yeah, but okay. um, I bought both that you could do. Okay, see, here's the thing. Look. Yeah, see, it does look like a dead fish. Mm -hmm. Which is very appetizing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I looked at the, what is I that? I'm not going to do that because of whipped yeah. cream. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to use a... Uh, oh, it smells so divine. Let's give you some whipped cream. Mm -hmm. And then let's put a little caramel right on the top. Oh, uh, what's not to Seriously. love here? Seriously. Oh. Careful because it's hot. Oh, my <laughs> word. <laughs> Get it? They have this in heaven. <laughs> I know they do. Mm. That would be a fancy drink to serve to your to your lady friends. Oh, we're gonna give Abby some. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I am not kidding you. That is one of the best things. Arsling Rippy doesn't lie. I'll tell you that. It's mm. good. Okay. Okay. You see. want this? Okay, you're okay. I'm I just want to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah uh, I remember they're interviewing with them uh, upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you looking after uh -huh. me, girl. All right, if you want this recipe. Oh, we'll... my. <laughs> <laughs> We're not kidding. Uh, oh, gosh. Like her That's mother can always tell I when she doesn't like the recipe. This, this is just it's unbelievable. Really good. <laughs> so we'll email it to you or write to us. It's, uh, there's no cost. It does help sometimes if you can send a stamped envelope because we have to send out a lot of them. But as soon as that comes up on your screen, then you're going to hear Abby saying, come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas trees. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Say, 
Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Oh, come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Our Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Come on, ring those bells. I'm telling you, if that doesn't put you in the Christmas spirit, you're Scrooge. <laughs> Welcome, Abby. I'm so glad to have you here. Oh, thank you, Artheline. I just <clears throat> love and appreciate you oh. so much. And I want to take the opportunity to thank you oh, for being you. so faithful, oh, for being so such a champion for Jesus. Oh, thank and you. And for women, for the home, mm -hmm. for the church. And it's a joy to be with you. Well, there's untold thousands of people who really perked up when they <clears throat> when they heard that because uh, there was a time when Evie was absolutely at the top of all gospel music, and that's that's the truth. And uh, thankful that you've really stayed steadfast. And um, it's hard to believe Evie is a grandmother. That is very yes. hard. <laughs> Do you know that in Scandinavia, when they talk about grandchildren, they say grandkids are life's dessert. Mm -hmm. I would and agree. I think that's true. I would we agree. have three, Pelle uh -huh. and I. So it started with our grandson, Max, who's four and a half. Mm -hmm. And then we have Liv, who's a year, and Linnea, who's mm -hmm. eight months. I want to go back. Uh, Abby has recorded 30 albums. She has Dove Awards, uh, Female Vocalist of the Year for two years, uh, been inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and uh, worked extensively with Billy Graham, mm. and uh, just saw the blessing of the Lord, and I never saw Evie get a big head or anything like that. Um, you were so well grounded. In fact, the song that we just watched you sing, the B-roll on that was from Scandinavia. It was. Are, you're bilingual, right? I'm actually trilingual. Oh, come on. Yes, Norwegian and Swedish. Are they are they they're similar? Close. Yeah, yeah, they're close. And and I, my husband's the Swede and I'm Norwegian, and so there's always this, which one is the heavenly language? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you were you're American born. I am. I'm born in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But my parents had just come to the United States from Norway with my brother. And so I grew up in a home where we spoke Norwegian all the time. So now how about your mom's still living, right? Does she, she still? She is, is she, 89 and she now has come to live with my husband and me in our home. And it's wonderful. It was 16 years ago that the Lord took my dad home and uh, we miss him a lot, but she's been doing super. Uh, but just lately, we realized this is time. It's time, yeah. Sharp as a tack, though, and what a prayer warrior. She speaks English by now, oh, I'm yes. sure. Oh, yes. Well, she's lived in the country mm -hmm. 60 years. Well, you were very young when you became very, very popular uh, in the 70s, right? Yeah. What was it, do you think, that kept you so grounded? Because there were other great singers that we all know and love today, but they've had issues that you haven't faced. Uh, mm -hmm. You married one time and you're still married. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What was it? Well, I think, Artheline, the, the understanding that it's been the Lord that's opened every door. It's been 
the Lord that's closed certain doors mm -hmm. and that understanding that I'm just part of what he's doing, like the instrument. And if, if an instrument just sits in the corner without someone playing it, it's just a little piece of wood. Mm -hmm. But when the maestro gets on and plays, that's when he can really get a message mm -hmm. out. And that's what I mm -hmm. felt all along was my, my role in it all is allowing him to play on me and to use me. You know, another thing, <clears throat> your selection of songs back then are still quite popular. Mm. Uh, what was it that guided you to choose a song? Did you have a manager or producer or something that had control of that? Well, I've never had a manager. It's really only been the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and Not bad. <laughs> that's pretty wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, but my mom was great in helping me. Uh, in the early days. And then folks at Word Records and with the Billy Graham team, mm -hmm. uh, I often say I never went to Bible school, but I had nine years with the Billy Graham team, traveling mm -hmm. around the world with them mm -hmm. and being part of crusades in different places and, and seeing, as you so well know, Arthleen, um, when Dr. Graham would come to the end of his message and he would say, I'm going to ask you yeah. to get up out of your seat. I, I sense the emotion of it just talking about it because it never got old. It was a sacred moment. And it was as though we were in the birthing room for thousands after mm -hmm. thousands after thousands coming forward to give their lives to Jesus. So that was really my, my grounding, if you will. It was my training, training school, mm -hmm. my Bible school. And Cliff Barrows was really Very like... Very good friends. Oh, and he married Pella and me mm -hmm. about 37 years ago. Mm -hmm and tied a good knot and uh, just what a what a I've I've often thought too that with this team their integrity both spiritually mm -hmm. but also personally wow I've worked with them a couple of times and I was on their executive committee when they came here and then I mm. spoke for one of their Great. Uh, <clears throat> one of their events he had the conference for the itinerant evangelist yes and only brought it to the united states one time louisville kentucky that. yes and uh, it's the first time they had a division for women speakers. yes and uh, i spoke for that and yeah i Arthur just I, I mean it is just as clean as a whistle you can yeah. you can trust that association and of course uh, franklin graham's carrying on yes. the wonderful benevolent side of it um I want to go back, though, a little bit. It seems to me that you, did you quit when you got married? I didn't quit uh, in one sense, but I did get off the road. Mm -hmm. um, I <clears throat> was doing other things and building with Pella a new avenue of ministry. And then the children came along pretty quick and for the first 25 years of our marriage, I pretty much was a homekeeper. Yeah, now a lot of people would say, uh, boy, you really gave up a lot. Not at you, all. You, you were at a pinnacle, I'm not kidding, a pinnacle of uh, musical success, oh. as the world would term it. Mm -hmm. And so when you got married, you knew for sure your, your focus was gonna change. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and I don't regret that mm -hmm. one bit. And yet, I love to sing, mm -hmm. and I love to, um, I love to be part of whatever God is doing, whether it's speaking or or mm -hmm. one on one with a neighbor or or um, writing. Or I, I'm game for it all. But at that time in my life, I realized that it was important for Pell and me to get so. Um, to, to clearly both hear what did God want us to do. How old were you when you got married? 20, I was a month away from 23. 
So I'll be 60 in a few weeks. No. And Yes. Not, not Abby. Yes. <laughs> I'll be 60. And you remind I, me of Peter Pan in a way. You know, I don't want to ever get old. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, um, you're kind. But what I, what I also think of those years with our son, Chris, and our daughter, Jenny, they would never come back again. When they well, that's a very mature and spiritual look at it. I'm just looking at it from the world's point of view uh, that you, you, you really did basically walk away from it when you were at, at just a zenith of uh, mm. what well, a lot of people would love to do in, yeah. in the music field. Gospel well, and, or I, not. and I never looked back. I knew it was what the Lord wanted from me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all we can answer for is ourselves before God. Well, when it's all said and done, too, um, what is there besides your family? I mean, your family is here, and then the next thing is like down here. Yeah. And uh, I can see why you wouldn't have, um, have any real regret on that be because know. of your outcome here. You've got kids who love the Lord and they're mm -hmm. teaching your grandchildren. Um, when you, uh, I heard you at Northside Baptist here once. Oh. Uh, you, you go so many places yes. that you would, would you remember it? I do remember Northside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful people. Ken Moon was there. The That's pastor. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. In the 70s, mid 70s. Uh-huh. And um, like I said, uh, you, you were just climbing then in every album that came out seemed to eclipse the the one that you had just finished the artwork on them but the songs mm. the songs were unbelievable well the songs for me have always been the tool mm -hmm. so um, I know I'm not the greatest singer in the world and I know that uh, there are plenty of others that do it and will will continue to do it much, much better than me, but I've realized that if I have someone's attention for two and a half minutes or three minutes with a song, mm -hmm. then Arthelene, I'm gonna make it count, mm -hmm. and I want to have it, I want it to deliver a message and something that can stand on mm -hmm. its own and present Jesus, the one who means everything to me. Without him, it's like pff, the world is gray. Mm -hmm. But with him, there's colors beyond what we can even see with our physical eyes. I was just thinking of some of the songs that people would still remember, and that's Mirror. Yeah. Mirror, um, and Come on, Ring Those Bells. But one that really grabbed my heart was Just Because I Asked. Now, oh, yeah. Google it, I guess. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, it's powerful. I ended up recording it myself oh, after I heard I'd you love sing to it. Hear but that. Um, where did you find that, and and were you the one who selected it? I was, and it, that was written by the same one who wrote Mirror, mm -hmm. and uh, quite a few other songs that I recorded on that Mirror album. Also, Special Delivery, mm -hmm. and uh, Moving in the Spirit, and. Uh, the song, Praise the Lord, He Never Changes. Yeah, now, Ron Harris wrote the music for that, but the words to Praise the Lord, He Never Changes were written by Stormy Omardian. I didn't know that. Who has now written 50 books on praying for yeah, your loved yeah. one. And, and, uh, and great songs, too. And wonderful songs. But Ron Harris was a... And is a truly gifted man, a great musician, mm -hmm. great songwriter. He and his wife wrote many of the songs together. And he came from a Jewish background and was just, he said, I would pray and say, Jesus, help me find a, a track here with a song for my Christian friends. So just because I asked mm -hmm. was one of those and, and, uh, and so many others because they just, they, they just reached a depth of a message, a delivery that was deep. 
Do you remember the words to it in this quiet hour? Overcome with emotion for what I've been given just because I asked, how can I quite tell him, you tell you what I feel for my Jesus, for what he has done for me just because I asked. It's, and then the last line is, and he will leave me never. Oh. And, and a Jewish man wrote that. Yes. And you've lived that, Artheline. You know it. I know it. I oh, know it to yes. be true. And that's why the songs won't die, even mm -hmm. though I'm the greatest one to enjoy the new things mm -hmm. that are uh, on the radio mm -hmm. and that you can get on, on a CD or download or upload or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I love it all. And we just have a couple minutes, uh, but uh, I have asked her to come back and bring her husband because they are in a really in a missionary we are. ministry right now. Could you tell us just a little bit about it? Yes, China Mercy. By the way, we've had your website up and they can get oh, some great. of your music through that, they right? They sure can, okay. they sure can. And it's on iTunes and Amazon as mm -hmm. well. But Pella and I are working with China Mercy, and it's a wonderful uh, work that is uh, designed to help build very basic medical mm -hmm. clinics mm -hmm. to the poorest of the poor in the hillsides and mountainsides of China. Mm -hmm. And we're working with a wonderful man named Jinning Kong. His name is not too familiar, but his grandpa is known around the world and in history books forever. Mm -hmm. His name is Mao Zedong. That's and unbelievable. He, and he's inviting us, the mm -hmm. Christians in the West, to come and help show the love of Jesus by building these clinics and thereby saying, you know, he cares for you. And we do too. And they can probably get information through your website sure. if you want to China ask her Mercy. about that. You know, the other day I took some things to the Salvation Army and there were guys hanging around there whose lives were wasted and people lined up to um, give their stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this isn't the most welcoming place, but I felt the presence of Jesus. Amen. And when you talk about those clinics yeah. that you have, that's where Jesus hangs out. That's right. And we cannot forget that this, right. um, this time of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I've made it a policy myself. I never pass a Salvation Army buckle without either. putting putting something I in it. I think of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've starred a few people on oh, Facebook. Oh, yes, you have. <laughs> but don't forget that side of Christmas, for heaven's yeah. sakes, my friends. Evie, it's been wonderful to have you. I love time. you. But bring your husband. And I will. We'll let them know a little bit more about this wonderful ministry. And uh, please join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeeper's oh, program, great. you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 